Hello and welcome to a brand new playthrough for the channel. This is a Battletech on career mode. Uh, so if you're normally here for some XCOM 2, don't worry, it will of course return. Uh, this just feels like a very necessary detour. Uh, this is a fantastic game. And the only thing it's really got in common with XCOM is the fact that it's a turn-based game. The way it plays though is completely different. Uh, so what is it? Well, basically we are a mercenary outfit just trying to make ends meet. We're flying around space, doing jobs that involve giant mechs fighting each other. And we have a few of those on board. So this is kind of our mobile base, the Argo. And uh, on board we've got some mech warriors. We've also got some mechs. And uh, yeah, we're going to go through all of this in a moment. Uh, but first, let me introduce to you the faction, our, well, our little mercenary group, Chimpy's Banana Bandits. So I hope you'd like to join me if you want to be one of the mech warriors on this adventure drop a comment down below what you want to be called and maybe the type of mech you want if you are familiar with the game by the way if you are familiar with Battletech sorry but this first part is very much going to be tutorial mode because there's a lot of people that aren't that familiar with it it turns out so yeah right where should we begin I guess we'll have a little look at what we're doing where are we so we are yeah, let's go navigation let's go on the star map to begin with let's start big start broad okay so we are currently located here. This is our sort of world map as it were. And you can see the various different factions there are around. You can do jobs for them. You also can do jobs that will actually upset other factions as well. Um, they're all at war essentially. As you can see, we'll be flying around here and just doing various jobs. We are probably, you're always going to make an enemy. No matter what happens, you're always going to make an enemy. Uh, so we, we're starting off in this little half skull. Uh, system here called independence so it's actually quite important the description sometimes because it can give you an idea as to what sort of biomes you're going to be up against so this is basically a water world as it were a lush world dominated by vast oceans and jungle covered volcanic islands so generally speaking we should be able to find lots of little pots of water to jump into and cool our mechs while we're shooting so that would be quite handy actually um, it's got a black market, but that doesn't help us right now. We do want to make contact with the black market, so we will be doing a lot of contracts to help out pirates. Uh, that will get us access to the black market. The sort of system that it is can often indicate the sort of technology that you can possibly buy. So this seems to be quite sort of meh, I guess. Medium population, periphery level civilization. A periphery level of technology less advanced and more provincial... I can't say that word for some reason, than the Inner Sphere. So the way I believe the law in Battletech works is you've got your Inner Sphere worlds, which are more developed, and then you've got your Periphery worlds, which are less so. They're kind of the sort of the outback, as it were. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be flying around doing all of that. Now, we're, in order to do this, we're going to need to pilot some mechs. So who wants to take a look at our starting mechs? That's what you're here for, right? It's Battletech. So here are the starting mechs. It turns out very, very, very similar to what I was actually, what you use in the campaign. In fact, if you swap out the commando, put in a blackjack, uh, get a shadow hawk as well, then yeah, you'd be fine. That'd be basically a starting, <laughs> your sort of campaign mode. Uh, we've got the Vindicator, which I think we're going to run as a bit of a up close brawler. Obviously, while it's got its default stock loadout, not really. The PPC is very long range. Uh, the Centurion, I want it to make it long range, probably an LRM boat, I think, tends to be its best use. This will all make sense soon, I will explain what all these things mean, these little words I'm saying. Uh, we've got this pathetic little commando, that's just going to be there to hopefully, I don't know, distract the enemy. Speaking of distractions, the Spider, the ultimate distraction, and this is basically going to be there just to sort of jump about, hopefully absorb some easy shots, and... Uh, target scan, I guess, whatever the term is, you know, where, it's, where it scans enemies and makes them easier to hit. Uh, so yeah, these two are going to be doing all the heavy lifting for now, the Centurion, the Vindicator. So the way Battletech works is rather than the unit having one, like, health bar, as it were, different sections of the mechs have their own health, essentially. So you can see here, you've got your right arm, right torso, your head, center torso, left tor uh, torso, left arm, and you've got the legs as well. Um, if your center torso goes to zero, that's it, you 
it gets blown up. The whole thing gets blown up, essentially. You can lose limbs, you know, on the outside, but then obviously you lose the components they're on as well. You can have ammo get shot at. So let's say we lost all of our armor here in our right torso. Our structure would then be exposed. The health then comes out of that whenever we get shot at. But we also have a chance to have ammo get detonated whilst the structure is exposed as well and it gets shot at. So, yeah, everything has its own individual components, you know, individual health. So what we might do is get rid of, say, the LRMs. We're not, not going to do this right now and maybe max out the armor. That still gives us a little bit of tonnage left. So here I'd probably get rid of a heat sink, let's say. You know, something along these lines. Probably add another heat sink, if anything. Uh, but yeah, I do want to make this a bit of a close range brawler, so we will be customizing that at some point. Uh, yeah, really, that kind of goes with everything. So, for instance, we've got here, you get different types of weapons, you've also got different hard points for the different types of weapons, so not every we mech can carry any type of weapon. It also depends on the weight of the weapon. The bigger the mech, the, uh, the more weight it can carry, obviously. Uh, but yeah, over here, <clears throat> as you see, we've got a ballistic hard point here for ball ballistic weapons. And these are sort of auto cannons that do a lot of damage, but they suffer from recoil, but they do pack a really good punch. You've got the purple here. These are your rockets, so short range and long range missiles. Fairly self-explanatory. They're basically sort of cluster fire. So the number after it corresponds to the number of rockets it shoots. So you've got 5, 10, 15, 20. You've got lasers, medium lasers, large lasers, PPC, which is the thing the Centurion, sorry, the Vindicator here has. It's basically a giant plasma cannon. Uh, it's very inefficient, I will say. I don't, I don't think I like them that much, actually, now that I've been using other stuff in a warm-up to this. A little commando here has got a la one large laser and then one medium laser. We're going to get rid of the SRM, the, sh the two rockets, SRM2. What's, what's two rockets going to do? That's just, yeah. Get rid of that, add some armor so it's less likely to die. Sounds like a better idea. Anyway, yeah, this should be quite fun. So I realize if you are new to Battletech, you're probably like, what is going on? I have no idea what you're talking about here. Uh, but as we play, it'll start to make more sense to you. Um, so mechs come in four different uh, size classes. You've got your light mechs from 20 to 35 tons. That would be, as you see here, these two designs are light mechs. They're not very good. Uh, mediums, 40 to 55. Heavy, 60 to 75. At this point, you start to need different jump jets in order to, well, use them in that way. Um, they need custom ones, heavy ones, and assault need their own ones as well. 80 to 100 ton mechs are assault. That's double, double our heaviest. Yeah, they're big. They get big. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, so we can only really take on little basic easy contracts for now. Uh, let's make... Yeah, let's get to know our first set of mech warriors. So, aside from myself, Ready for we've got a big red joining us here. By the way, I've not customized how anybody looks, so sorry about that. But uh, it, it just is, <laughs> just the way it, uh, just the way it is. Peter, he's back, the MVP from XCOM. We've got Meerkat, who might actually watch this. Hello, Meerkat, if you are. Uh, the Spoon is joining us, of course. And Andrea. So there we go. These, this is our starting roster. Like I say, I'm going to need more pilots. Also, someone here is going to die. Not me, because I can't die. Um, no, seriously, your main character cannot die. Um, so we are going to need replacements, but I need up to eight. I mean, I want to use all eight berths that we get in the, uh, in the Argo to begin with. So, yeah, it's going to be necessary regardless. Uh, we do need to upgrade the ship a little bit, but do I want to do that now? Hmm. <clears throat> it's quite cheap. What do we need to upgrade the mech bay? Required repaired power conduits. So we might do this. The only thing is it costs that. I never know what to do straight away. Uh, right, anyway. Sorry, that was a random distraction. Uh, so, you've now seen the mechs. You've seen the ship. You've met the mech warriors. You've seen the map, so we're at that little system called Independence, right? We need to take up some contracts. So here's a list of contracts and, uh, well, you've got your two two types of rewards. You've got your pay and you've got your salvage. This has quite a lot of salvage. I don't like that. 
There's definitely going to be some extra enemies on the field there, isn't there? Uh, we want to start off a nice easy half skull one, just as a sort of tutorial mission, and in the hope that there's no, no actual enemies. Uh, like, there's not really much to fight, hopefully. Um, I think we might go for noisy neighbours. So this one here, it's for the planetary government. We generally don't want to do missions for the local planetary government if it's not in one of the territories, because that just doesn't help us. They don't like us or dislike us either way. So all we're going to do here is piss off the Torian Concordat, if I'm saying that right. Uh, we're going to do this anyway. It's a basic battle. It's, there's no objective other than kill all the dudes, and it's in a tundra, which is really good for heat dispersion as well. So you fight in different biomes. So icy peaks, barren permafrost, heat sinks slightly more readily in this... Yeah, heat sinks slightly more readily. But occasional pockets of geothermal heated hot springs can reduce heat efficiency for any mech that stands in them. That shouldn't be a problem. We're going to do this on... I'm tempted to go heavy on the salvage. But I think I might go neutral instead, just to keep it safe. So... Let's go for this Noisy Neighbours one here, and let's see who we're using to begin with. Well, I'm going to go you two, I'm going to go for our commando, and then one of the spiders. And I've been thinking about who's taking what. I think Spoon, I'm going to have you in the commando. And Meerkat, you're going to go for the Vindicator, because it's kind of like a sniper build for now, while it's got the PPC. Big Red, you're going to take the Centurion, get in there and brawl and stuff, and Slicer can do a little bit of scouting and such. So you can see here we've got our drop tonnage. So generally speaking, you want to make sure the amount that you've got here matches the difficulty of the mission you're doing at least. Luckily, it goes way over as it should. Um, view details. Yeah, no, that's nothing there. So yeah, there we go. So I'm going to send you guys out. I'm going to stay back and just watch from afar. Um, we are playing with stock builds here, so they're not going to be that good. They're not going to be terrible, but they're just not going to be that great. Not that there's much you can do with these two anyway. But yeah, we can definitely improve the Vindicator. I want to get rid of the PPC and just add in a bunch of medium lasers. Maybe one large laser and a bunch of mediums would be much better. I think that could be quite good, actually. Lose the LRM as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a lot of changes I want to make to that Vindicator. All right, let's go. All right, here we go. We've got our four mechs. Okay, y'all. All right, Rock. banana bandits. Let's Rock. move. So to begin with, everybody's just basically going to be sprinting, orders? and it looks like I was going to say the Centurion was stuck there. That would have been very unfortunate. Now our spider has got a lot of mobility. Oh, Can also jump like crazy. Commander. I must say. So, there's some over there. Oh, hello. They are a lot closer than I was expecting. On my way. Right, we do want to be very careful with Spoon here. So, I think we'll put him in trees right here. Back, so, trees will act as 20% cover for him. And our spider is just going to move up here. Alright. Oh, hello. Alright, that was a... Okay, right, so here we go. So, that's just a little locust. Taking one shot. So as you see, we've built up these little pips here. The, f the further we move, the more of those little Number. evasion pips we actually build up. So those are actually particularly useful. Uh, what are we actually taking on here? A javelin and another spider. A locust. So nothing here is very good, but they all seem to have cover. They're, they're, they're all guarded at the moment. Copy that, Commander. Alright, tell you what, though. So, I've moved here into cover. We've got up two evasion pips, which is not a lot. Um, but I think we'll take this chance to take a shot here. Now, as you can see, we've got... A much better shot here of the large laser than we do the medium because the large laser it's at a more opportune range so each type of weapon has different ranges let's say we did this still kind of the same it's just generally a better weapon i guess um the javelin's much more fearsome here i think it's got some missiles on it so we'll start off take these 
Spoon only hit with the medium laser there. Alright, you ain't gonna do a lot, little spider. We can probably just go in and melee it, to be honest. What's up, boss? Work now, something that we can do is reserve for the next turn, which we are going to do here. For the right opportunity. All right, took a little rocket there, but the armor is more than enough to fin it off. It's got... Yes, Commander. Because have two pips, that's fine. Two little evasion points. On the way. So we're going to build up two ourselves. These shots are not particularly good because everybody's aim is... Well, not that good. Ooh! And there goes the right leg. So that was a fantastic shot there by Meerkat. Like that shot. And he's destroyed the right leg, which has forced it to... No which has knocked it over. Now knocking a mech over injures the pilot. Waiting for orders. So that's nice. <laughs> okay, I think we want to... Want to build up a little bit of keep a bit of distance here. You can see there's these different ranges, and that seems to be our opportune range. This section here, the darker the color, the more weapons that fall within that range. So, Copy that. let's move the centurion here. Now, because it's been knocked over, we can actually call a shot on it. So, it might be nice to go for the leg here. We usually you go for the torso just to sort of core it and have done with it. I'd kind of like to do this. See if maybe we can get rid of that right leg. Yeah, left leg, sorry. Yeah, left leg destroyed. That, that That's that mech taken out of it, I think. Receiving you. At least I would have thought it was, but maybe not. All right, we're now gonna use the jump jets here with the spider. There we go. Didn't do anything, Never mind. Probably go for the torso then. What weapons have you got in each? I don't know. I don't know where your weapons are located. I'm not familiar with the javelin, so. Here it comes. Okay. Right. That's right. The Vindicator has got some very sturdy armor. All right. Spoon. You can probably move here. You can still see everything. Acknowledged. What have we got? One, one, really. Yeah, you might as well just take. Here we go. Nothing. No, nope, doesn't look like it. Oh, going hand to hand, are you? Cheeky boy. Oh, that could be a problem. Good, okay, so sometimes when enemies use, or when you use them, miniguns or flamers, it's very easy to get a headshot, which will, no matter what, it will Make always injure order. the pilot. So it doesn't kill them necessarily, just make, it just always injures them. And obviously that is not so good. I kind of want to come in here and melee. But that might not be the best idea. So I'm actually going to move our spider up here. I think at this point, if we can get both shots somehow to hit the torso. On it. Left torso destroyed. That's injured the pilot again. Inflicted some heavy damage. Alright, it's now going to get up. There's not really much left to this javelin, is there? You go right ahead. Alright. Now, we could get ourselves into a little fight here, which I think is not a bad idea. We've got a little short laser with the Vindicator. How are you doing for armor? We're getting a little bit low, and you seem to be the focus of everyone's attacks. So I think I'm actually going to pop Vigilance. So what Vigilance will do, uh, aside from getting rid of any stability damage, these little bars here, and stability damage. So anytime it goes over this bit, you become unsteady if it goes all the way up, or whatever the threshold is. Uh, yeah, no, when it fills up, that's when you get knocked over. So that will remove that. It'll also grant an extra 20% defense. So 
Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to melee as well as use the short laser. Okay. Jump jet destroyed. Okay. Good to go. Now we could double that, coming with the Centurion here, that also does some nice damage. Which I'm very tempted to do. The thing is that Locust is still about. I might actually go for that. Ooh, left leg destroyed. Damn, that auto cannon is is great. Okay, you've decided to flee. That's that's fine. Well, do you know what? Our Vindicator also has jump jets. I think I might go for the locust here. Let's see. Yeah, let's use the LRM as well. No, I think that was a miss there. Never mind. Okay. Barely a hit, Commander. Skipper. All right, all right. Spoon. I think it's time for you to see if you can finish off this guy. I want you to hit the torso if you can. To be honest, just just hit it, and that, that should work. Go ahead and bring in the SRMs as well, because just one of these rockets hitting will do it. I'm on him. There it is. Target down, Commander. Lovely. Okay. Good to go. Let's bring our spider in over here. What have we got? Yeah, it looks like if you can hit this centre torso with just one of those medium lasers. In all nope, never mind. So using the jump jets there really helped us build up some evasion, hence the miss. How's it going? Okay. Move Big Red in. I think we'll go easy on that because it suffers recoil, so we'll reset it. That's the theme of ballistic weapons. Oh, beautiful shot. Hope we can salvage that. Go time. Shouldn't be a problem. You chose to stay still. Well, you've pretty, pretty much sealed your fate, haven't you? Uh, all right. I'm rolling. Spoon's having a good old time, isn't he? All Go. It's a pretty good punch. Ah, uh, Commander. Affirmative. So something we can do is use death from above. <laughs> Basically, you melee with your jump jet and you just smash into them, but you end up taking structural damage in the legs, which wouldn't be the best idea right now. Oh, there we go, there's a knockdown. I'm ready. All right, come on then, let's step on his face. Moving to position. Put my weight into it. <laughs> there we go. Kill. And there we go. And that's a basic mission. Mission successful. Really straightforward that one was, as it should have been. A little half skull mission like that shouldn't be a problem. So we get a nice little small payout. We also get to collect salvage at the end of the mission. Uh, so as you can see, we didn't have any structure exposed, which means we don't have any repair times. Nobody got injured as well, so nobody's in the infirmary. So everybody can go out on the same, you know, exactly as they were this time. Everybody can go back out. Okay, things we want. Nothing here is particularly appealing, if I'm being honest with you. This is all garbage. The javelin might be slightly useful. To be honest, I'd rather have the SRM-6. And the medium laser. Did we get it? No. We 
did get two parts for a spider though. Which, once we build one of those up, we can sell it off. Because I do not need a third spider. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. Uh, so there we go. So that was really good. So I do want to do some upgrading to the mechs. But I'm going to do that in between traveling between systems. And we'll, I'll show you how that works next time. Uh, so let's take a little look now at the store. Now that we've saved up a little bit more money, have a look at what we've got available. So from the store, we can actually build... We can buy other parts of mechs. These are much, much bigger mechs. You can see a 90 ton Cyclops. We can't even afford one part of that. Um, I've also got it set. I should probably go over the settings, actually, in case you're wondering, if you are familiar with the game. Uh, when we do create mechs, we uh, they're un they come unequipped, so we have to we have to arm them up. We also only need three parts for mech assembly. This is the lowest amount that you can possibly have. Um, I'm not playing this for difficulty. That's the difficulty score I'm going for, 0.7. I'm not. I'm just trying to get through this and survive is my idea. We've got slow mech warrior progression to up the difficulty bit as well as as well as less advanced mech warriors. Standard salvage, standard pay. It's all pretty pretty ordinary difficulty. I don't have it on Iron Man in case I give myself a royal screw up. I get one sort of okay. I didn't. That was a bad idea. Um, it's only because I'm still not that familiar with the game. That is kind of my one freebie. Whenever, you know, when I use it, you'll find out. Uh, hopefully I never do though. I think I learned a lot from my campaign trial that I did because I made a good few mess ups in that one. Uh, but anyway, I'm pretty happy with that. If we have a little look at the store actually again, what sort of weapons have we got? Got a large laser plus. So weapons can also have these pluses next to them that give them extra ability. So this one would give it plus one accuracy so let's say on spoon's little commando we could increase his aim by about five percent by equipping that um, it's just not really worth it in this case i don't think I, I, then again i want to give this to my um what do you call it my vindicator so it might be worth picking that up uh possibly uh, anyway let's take a look at what other contracts there are here oh hello now ooh, they want me to do something for them to the manth I actually plan on going to that system. Oh, interesting. We'll, we'll look at that later. We'll look at that later. The thing I want to do next is actually this. This is quite a high pay, I have to say. I don't want to do anything against the pirates. I want to do stuff for the pirates, which is pretty horrible. So there's one here called Mopping Up. After a recent skirmish with our forces, the surviving units of our local government lands escaped the battlefield. We believe they've managed to partially repair their mechs, and that means they're a loose end that the local pirate organization would like to see tied off permanently. Track down these survivors and finish them off for good. All right, well, you heard it. That's, uh, this one's got really high pay, so I'm actually going to up the pay a bit more and go for less salvage. Uh, that's a nice nice amount of pay there so i think we're going to go exact same lineup again that worked fairly well but we are going to be against more difficult enemies so let's see how we do this time Command interface initiated. all right here we are we're starting in water ready to rock it's a very pretty planet isn't it it's a shame there's no water out here, though. That would have been good. I have a feeling this could be a little bit warm. What is this? Spore fields. Never seen this before. Spore fields slow. All units moving through them. Units standing in spore fields suffer an additional 20% damage when hit due to the spore's corrosive effect. Plus four difficulty to hit units passing through spore fields. Okay. Interesting. On my way. Okay, very interesting. Ten, four. Right, another unit spotted. Coordinates received. That looks bigger. Are these these are what are these? What have we got? We've got a Jenna. These are probably the best of the light mechs, Jennas. They have pretty good uh a good armament. We've got a medium and a heavy? Are you serious? We've got a heavy mech? This stage of the game? My word. You've got to be kidding me. Alright, guys. 
This just got real. Well, let's just try and avoid line of sight to whatever the heavy is. Uh, instead, let's... Yeah, should we fire everything? It's very low chances to hit. We have a hundred ammo for the SRM2, so we can afford to just... Yeah, nice. Alright. Oh, you're right, you're sprinting, that's why. I was about to say, why can't I... Yeah, we need that solid red line, is what I wanted to see. Uh, right, medium lasers. We want to get in reasonably close. Oof. There's a lot of heat we're generating there. Oh, nice, you managed to hit the right torso. The left torso, rather. Oh. Scoop getting hit there. Okay. We do want to move our Vindicator in. Uh, I guess this will do. Let's give it a go. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Medium laser crit, medium laser destroyed. I think things are going swimmingly. Don't you? Standing by. No, I suppose. Alright, what have we got here? A trebuchet. Uh -huh. Position confirmed. So the question is, what do we want to kill off first? Do not have good aim. <laughs> really not good aim. I think we might want to go for the LRM here because we we should be able to do a lot of damage to this Jenna. Right torso destroyed. Pilot injured. Nice. That was a miss, and that was with a heavy, I think. That was an auto cannon. Yes, there's three enemies. One of them's a heavy. That is just kind of bonkers, really, when you think about it. Spoon, you took. You've taken a bit of damage here. I think I want to move you back this way. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh! Shots! Target down, Commander. Okay. That's four on two, so we really do have the numbers advantage here. I think I want to reserve with the spider. Holding for tactical advantage. So that the spider can take off some evasive there. Ooh. Ouch. I can't take much more of this. Smart. Get rid of some evasion if you want to go for the uh I await your command. Possibly the easy shot. Commander. Okay, I think what I want to do here then is actually this with the spider. Jump in. Okay, what in Orion? Are you serious? This thing's got an AC ten, LRM fifteen. Hmm. Kinda nasty. Right, let's take one shot here. Nice miss. Maybe lock on again. Ready for order. It is. Unfortunately. Okay. I think I maybe want to move instead here. I'm walking here. Just for heat preservation. Kinda of keeping it exactly the same here. By the way, this is our heat bar. I don't think I explained that in the first mission. So you can see their own the amount of heat they're generating as well. Uh, so, when it gets above this line here, that's when you start taking structural damage. Uh, so that bypasses armor, obviously, and you get eaten away from the inside, and you automatically, you'll have, you're gonna have to go in and repair the, the, uh, the mech afterwards. Got it, Commander. So let's see what we can do here. That's a miss with the PPC, which is kind of unfortunate. Order. Position confirmed. Right, that's not even in the trees, but never mind. Let's see what we can do here. Now, because he's in trees, he actually uh, took less damage. That's another miss with the auto cannon. A centurion's doing the best to take as much damage as possible there. 
So you've got multi-target. That's why he can shoot at two enemies. Three. That's fine. A spider's just there to it's on now. get shot at, really. <laughs> okay, the commando. I want to keep you sort of Affirmative, commander. up here. Keep firing. Oh, brilliant! Ha, Scoop, you you've that? really found your uh, your calling. I honestly thought that little commando was going to be useless, go. but no, it's been pretty good. I might actually just want to sprint. Just do this for now. Uh, kind of just to cool off. Because the jump jets, unfortunately, they do generate heat. Okay, structure has been exposed, so we are going to have to be careful here, especially with that Orion right there. Oh, my commando taking a shot there in the chest. They will be done. All right, we will kind of want to get our Vindicator in here. Primitive. And I think we may... This... You don't have a... You have quite a bit of armor. But I think we may want to go for this. Primitive. So, let's, yeah, let's make a start on them. I do worry about our commando here. I, I mean, our centurion. But I think if we maybe get you in to cover there, we should be fine. Structure exposed, good. Ooh. Ooh. That shot went internal. Uh, yes it did, didn't it? So we saw the little, yeah, structure exposed icon there. Do need to be careful here, because... I mean, the commander won't stand a chance against the likes of... You, but the Orion, hmm, I think we might be able to. I got you. This is very risky getting this close to this thing, but I'm gonna pop a vigilance because your armor is so weak anyway. Okay, left arm destroyed, and that's a crit on the LRM-15. Yeah, Commander. It's it's something. It's something, all right. Roger that. Get over here. Let's just take whatever shots we can, right? Locking in all weapon systems. Oh boy. Internal structure damage. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it. Waste your shots on my lights. All right. Kind of need the Vindicator to sort of do something awesome here. Lifting on. All right. Now we're we're getting an, an overheat warning here. Hmm. So I'm not really sure what the best thing to do here might be. Possibly give the PPC a little rest. And instead just go for... A shot. A couple of shots. Standing by. Alright, let's do this. Pop Vigilance here. And... Come on. Yes, I'm seeing some nice numbers there. We've got a head hit as well. 
Okay, going for shots on the commando. Okay, he's asset spoon. Do your best. Just tank it up. <laughs> right, we need to get you out of there. <laughs> but you can't. I kind of don't want you to lose too much uh, vision. Here we go. Free. Move you here. And yeah, take these shots. Alright, what sort of damage are we looking at here? Oh, you can almost deal with this yourself. Alright, bring the Centurion here. Yeah, let's give the auto cannon a rest. Medium laser crit. Target's taking a critical hit. Standing by. Okay. Eight. Eight, 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 eight. Kinda want more evasive. Mmm, no. Let's just hope for a lucky shot then. Yes, there it is, Andrea. On the center torso. Enemy down. Great, so that leaves Enemy one. Back. One of the buggers. So we are going to move our Vindicator in. Going to pop Vigilance. That's all you can see. S mm. Lose the LRM. On nice shot there. And you're now unsteady as well. Oh, no! Ooh! That is insane damage. 96. Internal damage. I'm receiving you. Roger that. Alright, let's move back. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to get anything done here, really. <laughs> Nothing. At least we got rid of your evasion. No luck. Yep. Alright, that's for everybody else. Well. Affirmative. Okay. Commando in the trees. There we go. Left torso destroyed. Pilot injured. One more injury to the pilot and they might be knocked out. Might be. Where's a good spot for you? Nowhere. To tell you the truth. Position confirmed. Let's just put you in the trees then. Taking the shot. Nice. Soften him up a bit more. Receiving you. That leaves us. Centurion here. Got it. Let's try and keep back a bit. Alright. There we go. <laughs> we did it. We took it out. That was a heavy. Mission that was a heavy mech. Way above our belt, that was. I mean, the actual. F fight overall no it was three against four so yeah no good stuff we got a nice payout but we just we don't get much loot though do we because we didn't take much salvage so we kind of have to make a decision as to what we're going to take here do we take the trebuchet do we take the orion part i think we've got to take the orion part it's the heaviest thing there we will also pick up a little bit more loot as well so we got the trebuchet, we got all three parts of the mechs, and we got a couple of medium lasers, which is good, because that'll be for the Vindicator. So, there we go. Let's confirm that. Generally speaking, that was pretty good. Good yield. But now we've got to have a look at what repairs we've got to make. So you saw we had some injuries there. So let's go to the mech bay. Let's see how long this is going to take. It was our two heaviest. Luckily, we didn't lose any parts, and I don't think anything really got damaged, so we're looking at three days there. 
two days there, so five days for repairs. There's no way we can do another contract in that time. Now, we can choose to travel somewhere else. This is where they start fighting each other here. Capture a base in the Highlands. That sounds like it could be quite expensive for me. A thorny problem. Hmm. Question is whether or not it's worth doing one of these other contracts before we go. Last mech standing. This is against the local pirate organization. We don't want to do that. We want, like I say, we want to get on the pirate side. So we have another little look at the star map. We kind of want to shimmy our way up. So when we go up here, this is where we've got a contract available. So it might be worth taking on that contract. 12 days travel time. We're only using five of them. That said, I am... I also want to do some repairs, uh, some upgrades to the Vindicator, I think. The PPC is not bad and all, it's just not amazing. We also want to see if we want to buy anything before we move away. So if we have a little look here, I kind of want to buy this Shadowhawk part. It is very expensive though. Could also buy a second part to an Orion. I mean, that'd be kind of nuts, having a heavy this early in the game, but... <laughs> I don't know if I do. Kind of want this l this large laser. This on the Vindicator could be quite nasty. Kind of nasty. We've got two large lasers. Hmm. I don't know. Not sure. I think I might, might, might actually take this. New weapon systems available. Real urban mech. So slow these things. Drive me crazy how slow they are. <laughs> I mean the price difference is not massive, is it? See, this is the sort of uh, it's this shadow hook, right? This would be perfect for Spoon to move to. Just jumping about the place. Put some SRMs on that. Could be a nice little close range brawler. Really high mobility. That could be quite good. That could be quite good. Uh, let's have a little look. See if we can train people up. So we've done two missions now. People have gained a little bit of experience. 750. So that is good. We kind of want to get everybody up to level 4 in everything. I think increased base hit damage might be good. Definitely. Uh, for Meerkat, absolutely. Training complete. Need something Big Red, same for you. Training confirmed, Commander. Waiting for orders. We want to give everybody Bulwark as well. So this is a passive ability. Everybody has plus 20% defense, damage reduction, sorry. Uh, so that is really, really useful. And everybody is going to be getting that. Andrea is going to be getting that and tactics. Meerkat's going to be taking Bulwark and I'm not sure what else for now. Receiving you. Same with Big Red. Somebody's taking one of these. Spoon will be taking the piloting ability. Sure, th sure footing. I think it'll be most useful for him. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Alright, I think I like this contract. I think we are going to take it. I'm just wondering if we want to... Do we want to buy any other parts of mechs? Or do we want to maybe save... Save it for now. What was the one I found? A trebuchet, wasn't it? They're not bad. Maybe I'll wait. Because what if we don't find any other parts? I've just wasted 671,000 credits. Like... <laughs> it's a little bit of a waste of money, potentially. Uh, Alright, we are in fact going to agree to this co contract if this is where I'm thinking it is on the star map. It was Mantharakara. Mantharaka. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. So, let's agree to the contract. It is a capture base. These can be really... Uh, Really kind of nasty though. So we've learned that the Canopian forces have constructed a forward base on Mantharaka, ignoring the express wishes of the local government. Naturally, the planetary governor is furious, but he can't make a stand against the Canopian battle mix without our assistance. The Torian Concordat has offered that assistance. You are to seize control of the Canopian base and hold 
it until we gain a legal claim to the facility. We will then sell it back to the Mantharaka government at a considerable discount. Alright, well there you go. Politics, eh? Look, there's all this politics going on, we're just here to make a bit of money for ourselves. And, uh, destroy things with our mechs, so... That'll do for this first part. I hope to see you for the next part, because the fights are only going to get more and more horrible. Uh, so yeah, do join me for those. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.